So let's talk about this even further uh, with legal analyst Andrew Lieb, friend of the program. Uh, Andrew, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you've been following this today, uh, watching uh, some fireworks uh, on the House floor. McCarthy uh, could not three times uh, garner 218 votes, uh, and the tally against him went up as each vote took place. They'll adjourn to, or well, they did adjourn, uh, and they'll reconvene tomorrow uh, at noon Eastern on the House floor for a fourth ballot. What are your overall impressions? What does this say about the Republican Party, do you think? This is the first day of the Congress. First of all, like you said, the 20th Amendment says this is the first day of the Congress, but we're going to learn that no matter what we get, if we get a House Speaker, we're certainly not going to have a Republican leader. So it doesn't make a difference right now as the Republican Party is in shambles. As we're seeing each vote, it's coming out worse. In the last vote, as you just said, he went from losing 19 to losing 20 votes. He had needed to get 218 votes. The guy's not even close, and he's making concessions left and right, and I think it all ties together the most marvelously like this. One of my favorite TV shows I was watching last night, 1923, that's the Yellowstone, the Duddens. The last time we had it go into another round for a speaker was 1923, 100 years ago. This is a mess. I mean, live now, look there, uh, like you said, this, uh, you know, a lot of us obviously have not seen this in our lifetimes, um, but this could go on for days. Uh, now, we're hearing from Fox News Capitol Hook correspondent uh, that the longer this goes on, um, you know, the less uh, amount, I guess, uh, of members could be present. Some have to go home for the weekend. Uh, there's only 434 right now. They do a roll call vote alphabetically, and they did it three times today. So Chad Pergram is saying the chances are quite slim for McCarthy if members can't be there present to vote for him uh, in the next couple of days. Well, there's two thoughts about that, Andrew. The first one is the record. What's the record? You said days. This could go on for months. In 1855, it went 133 rounds or two months long. And as a citizen, you're a citizen, I'm a citizen, I'm concerned, I'll tell you why. Our Congress can't do anything this entire time. Until there's a speaker, we can't get any work done in Congress, which is ironic because these never Kevin people are all about sticking up against the elites that aren't getting any work done in Congress. So they're actually self-sabotaging and stopping any work getting done in Congress. But a second ir irony that I just need to point out yeah. is a concession Kevin was forced to make is he was going to fix proxy voting which is the whole issue we're now discussing because they're not going to have people to vote. This is going to go for a very long time, I'm afraid, unless a new consensus speaker emerges. Yeah, and there was some talk as well, some House members, uh, you know, speaking on the record to some reporters, Republicans, that is, um, that this is not about ideology. This is not about policy. This is, you know, parliamentary procedure. These are rules uh, that, you know, govern the conduct on the House floor. Uh, and arguably, you can could, you could make the case that American, the American people don't care about the rules uh, on the House floor, about how they do their business. They care about the policy at hand. That's why uh, Republicans took back a very slim majority in the House. They're back in power, yet they seem to be tripping over themselves here, even with the power. I think they're getting part of the allure of Trump, right, and part of the function wrong. What Trump went to power with is that this swamp, this corruption, was getting nothing done. And they're right to go and pigeonhole Kevin with his, his coiffed hair and him looking like he's in the elite. And they're, they're saying, yeah, but really the American people, I think, don't care if someone looks good, looks bad, is elite, is not elite, is educated, is uneducated. They care if people roll up their sleeves and do work. And this is a terrible move, a terrible lens on the Republican Party, particularly when you're seeing Hakeem Jeffries getting unanimous consent on the Democratic side. And mind you, he got more votes for Speaker than McCarthy. Scary stuff for the Republicans. They got to get their act together. Yeah, I mean, the uh, I guess the impasse seems somewhat I intractable here uh, because you were kind of juxtaposing with the Democrats. Uh, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi would never let her, I guess, caucus out of line like this. But Kevin McCarthy cannot seem to get more people on board and he needs to do just that who knows what you know backroom deals are, are being made uh, until they reconvene at noon tomorrow um but this is uh at an impasse 
I think they should all be putting on reruns of House of Cards tonight <laughs> and understanding how to whip up those votes. Because how he goes into the vote with knowing that he's not going to get at least five, and he needed, he couldn't lose all five, at least five never Kevins is just crazy to me. They have to be making, as you said, backroom deals, but they should have been doing this weeks ago. It's a bad look because no matter what happens now, the concessions, how handcuffed he's going to be, the Republicans are not going to be strong. And right now, what they need to go into the presidential election up next is they need strong legislation and getting things done. That's what the American people want. They want people working for them, not against them. And uh, for some of these holdout Republicans, they nominated Jim Jordan, the Republican from Ohio. Jim Jordan said as much uh, on the floor at the lectern that he does not want to be speaker. He nominated Kevin McCarthy in the second ballot. Matt Gates then uh, ran right away and nominated Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan wants to sit as chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. That's what he wants. Maybe he secretly wants to be speaker. Who knows? Um, but you still had 20 House Republicans vote for him. Um, maybe they can reach some type of an agreement. But Jim Jordan's kind of, uh, he needs to, I, would you say he needs to get more outspoken about this for Kevin McCarthy? I think he needs to get more outspoken. I'm not going to go as far as to Kevin McCarthy. He needs to go more outspoken because how is he getting 20 votes on this last third round vote? He picked up a vote from yeah. um, Byron Donalds of Florida in this last vote. How is he picking on votes when he's saying, I don't want the job? They're voting for someone saying, not me, not me, I don't want it. And it's just insane to me. At least Andy Biggs had wanted to become elected the speaker. At least he got some of the votes the first time. Vote for someone who wants the job, not someone who doesn't want the job. So I think Jim Jordans needs to come together with McCarthy, and they have to come with leadership, and they have to whip votes tonight. Like I said, watch House of Cards. Figure out who they're going to get behind, because something needs to change, because the American people will never vote for a Republican president if we're two months later from now, like back in 1855, and we still don't have a speaker. They need to get a speaker now. Yeah. And speaking of that, uh, all the new freshman members uh, were there in the chamber today uh, because they still need to get sworn in to do the job they were elected to do once the speaker situation is set. Of course, one of those is Congressman-elect George Santos. Uh, we all know and we've been covering very extensively the scandals that have plagued him, to say the least. Fox's Madeline Rivera has a look uh, on his first day at Capitol Hill. Republican Congressman-elect George Santos avoided a throng of reporters standing outside of his office Tuesday. His future in Congress remains in question, shrouded in scrutiny, as he battles allegations that he misled the public about his past. New Yorkers deserve better. Our conference deserves better. Santos has admitted to lying about graduating from college and has confessed about never working directly for Goldman Sachs and Citigroup. He's facing investigations from federal and local prosecutors. Now, Brazilian authorities say they're planning to revive fraud charges against him from 2008, when a 19-year-old Santos allegedly bought items at a clothing store with a stolen checkbook, according to the New York Times. As multiple House Democrats call for Santos' resignation, several Republicans are also slamming his credibility. His conduct uh, is embarrassing uh, and unbecoming. Uh, and it is certainly a distraction. Complicating the issue, though, was House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy's daunting bid for speaker. He's fighting for every Republican vote, and Santos is vowing to support him. Santos. McCarthy. Any challenge regarding Santos may have to wait until after the speaker vote is complete. Once the House swears in Santos, it could also move to expel him, so it could be a doozy of a few days on Capitol Hill. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. Madeline, thanks so much. Let's uh, bring in Andrew Lee yet again to talk about uh, the talented Mr. Santos. That's what a lot of people are kind of referring to him as uh, kind of a nod to that movie with Matt Damon. But there's been a lot of movie TV references in our conversation today. Um, Andrew, uh, what do you think the House, what do you think congressional leaders are going to do? There's been talk of maybe bringing him in front of the House Ethics Committee. We know investigations have been started at the Nassau County level, uh, the DA there, also the Brooklyn U.S. Attorney's Office. It's not looking good for Santos. It's 
start off with, he represents the third district in New York. That's Long Island, the Gold Coast. This is where we read about the Great Gatsby. That's the area he's coming from, not too far from where I live. Mr. Santos, today, I believe, Brazilian authorities are telling us that they're now revising a 2008 fraud case against him. So not just Nassau DA, not just federal charges, but also Brazil. That all being said, the only people that can remove him from office appears to be the Congress. That all being said, except if there's an eligibility issue, which some people are flouting with potential citizenship or otherwise. But here's where we're going. If, even if he gets arrested, even if he goes prosecuted, even if he loses, even if he goes to jail, except for a constitution eligibility requirement, he could still remain in Congress as a felon unless Congress removes him. So the real question is, after whoever becomes the speaker becomes the speaker, are they going to start doing proceedings to bring him in and then send him packing? I want to know if that's going to be happening next. Yeah, and of course, there's still a lot of questions about, uh, you know, his uh, financial dealings, campaign donations, his, you know, allegations of his personal wealth uh, after so many embellishments in his resume. That all needs to be looked at, too. According to, you know, New York Republicans, Santos is already committed to not running for re-election, apparently, in 2024. But this is quite a headache, uh, especially... Four House Republicans, uh, as we've seen all of that unfold today on the House floor, Santos was kind of the sideshow. It is a disaster for them. Even though he's a sideshow, he's an ever-present sideshow. And I watched a great interview on Fox News with him, and he was asked to explain himself. He was asked to explain himself. Why is he doing this? Explain this finance thing. How do you work at City? How do you work at Goldman when they say you don't work for him? And he condescended to the American people in that interview and said they couldn't understand. I'm paraphrasing. But how do you say that? You double down and stupid. That's what this guy keeps doing. Anytime there's a layer where you're like, how does he do it? He goes further. We saw that he's been supporting the don't say gay. We saw that he says he's been out and respected at all times. He said for 10 years, then in t it comes out 2019, he gets divorced from a woman. The schools he said he worked for, no one's heard about. No one at the school knows of him. No one knows who he is. It's just, it's catch me if you can. That's the TV reference, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we'll see what happens, uh, you know, when he's in Congress, you know, if he will be stripped of his committee assignments, if there will be, you know, a vote to maybe censure. That all remains to be seen. He's not even sworn in yet because of everything that's been happening. But um, it's, it's, you know... Politicians, uh, they tell, you know, big lies, small lies all the time. Uh, I would be hard-pressed to find one that tells so many lies uh, about his own you know, personal resume, things that are easy to look up and check with the people in their lives. So uh, I guess the case of George Santos continues. We'll see if he makes any statements uh, once he is sworn in and once he takes office. What will you be looking for next And I guess, the case of Santos? I just need to echo something you just said, because yeah. I think this is where the American people can't handle it. It's not that he's lying about policy or even military and what he did and what medals. He's lying on things that we all need to put on our resume. Where did you go to school? Where did you previously work? It's like spitting in our face and telling us it's raining. It's the simplicity of the lies that's driving us nuts. So where am I looking for it to go next? I think he's going to get prosecuted for one of these days, if not by the AG in New York, who's also looking into him. But I would hope whoever the speaker is, they control their caucus. How do they control their caucus? They, as you pointed out, refer him to an ethics investigation. Number one, we have to clean house and make this above the swamp. That's the future of this house. All right. I think that's kind of the... The theme of, of today is uh, it's quite hard to control your caucus and your members. Andrew Lieb, thanks so much for being with us. We'll talk to you again. Thanks much.